Welcome to my presentation with the title Multi-Level Flying Capacitor zero Origin Switching Clan Switch Boost Converter. First, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Burkhard Ulrich. I'm currently a professor at the Baden-Württemberg Cooperative State University Stuttgart, and I was formerly a design engineer at Siemens AG designing switch mode power supplies in a power range from several watts up to several kilowatts, and I earned a Dr. Inc. degree in power electronics from Dresden University of Technology in 2009 after my studies of electronics engineering at the University of Applied Sciences Reutling. Now to the technical part of my presentation. In this I will show that a simple CBS operating principle based on a clamp switch is also feasible for flying capacitor DC-DC converters. Um, Multi-level converters have been considered in recent years also at lower power level because they can achieve higher efficiency and reduced EMI due to the reduced voltage stress at the transistors. But these converters can also operate at light load in a discontinuous conduction mode and this will degrade efficiency and can degrade EMI as parasitic oscillations can occur. In standard converters, one can cope with the situation by integrating a clamp switch and therefore there's the question, is such a simple ZVS operation principle also possible with multi-level converters and this will be shown in this presentation. The converter considered here is shown on this slide in two versions. On the left side we have a flying capacitor converter with four active switches and on the right side we have a converter where the two upper switches are replaced by diodes. For the presentation here, we consider the operating mode like this um, converter on the right side, which will be denoted as an asynchronous version. And uh, on the left side, we have the converter operating in a synchronous version. To these converters, an additional clamp switch network is added, shown here on the left and on the right, which is in parallel to the inductor and allows to trap the energy which would otherwise resonate in discontinuous conduction modes with the capacitances connected to the switch node. Let the current freewheel to initiate a zero voltage switching turn on of the two lower switches. To operate a free level flying capacitor boost converter with a clamp switch, we have to consider that there exist two different discontinuous conduction modes. Mode one, if the duty cycle is less than 50%, and mode two, if the duty cycle is more than 50%. In both cases, we have different input output voltage ratios. To achieve ZVS, we need to trap the energy, which would otherwise uh, oscillate between the inductor and the parasitic capacitances. Therefore, we have to turn on the clamp switch during the interval there. Otherwise, um, there would be this resonance as shown here in the light blue waveform. Therefore, in mode one, we have to activate the clamp switch if both switches are off and in mode two, we have to activate the clamp switch if just one transistor is on. Therefore, um, the drive signal has to be derived in different ways depending on the operating mode for the converter. In this slide, simulation waveforms of the converter are shown. The upper five traces shown here in red for both operating modes uh, are the currents of the transistors and the two diodes, as well as the current through the clamp switch network. The blue traces here are the voltages across both transistors and the combined midpoint voltage, which is the sum of both. And the lower red trace is the injector current, the lowest traces shown are the control signals of the switches. Um, in both cases here in mode 1 and mode 2 we have negative current um, in the phase where normally the current would oscillate and as the clamp switch would turn off at this time or at this time this will initiate a zero voltage transition or partial zero voltage transition. Um, one thing which is remarkable is uh, if we look at the operating mode 2 we see that the waveforms are similar than those of a boost converter operated with a clamp switch. On this slide with the current flow paths and the different circuit configuration for both modes are shown. These are described in more detail in the paper. When designing the converter, we have to map three requirements to achieve a ZVS condition. These are summarized on this slide. The first is we need to operate in discontinuous conduction mode, which poses a maximum power limit in both modes, as we would otherwise reach continuous conduction modes. The second requirement to achieve a ZVS is that we 
turn on the main transistors after an appropriate dead time after the clamp switch has turned off. This must be one quarter of the resonant period which occurs after the turn off process and is summarized using this equation in the middle. And the last is an energy condition which says that the energy stored in the inductor must be greater than the energy um, stored in the capacitors to fully discharge them. From this one can derive two conditions depending on the input and output voltage for both modes. In mode one, the output voltage need to be at least two times the input voltage to achieve full CDS, which is not achievable as in this case, the output voltage is lower than two times we in. And in mode two, the output voltage should at least four times the input voltage, which can be achieved and can be seen as the better of the two operating modes. Another thing to consider is that the clamp switch network will introduce additional losses here. The conduction losses are shown and can be evaluated using this simplified expression if we know the average and the RMS current flowing through this network. This will lead to an increase in the losses as shown here in the blue curve. Uh, these are calculated with values similar to those of the converter prototype shown later. The red curve shows the efficiency reduction of the converter. Therefore, we can see that if we have an output power larger than about uh, 10 watts, the efficiency will just be reduced by 1%. To validate the proposed operating principle, a low power prototype with 12 volt input voltage was built, which is here shown on the right side, and operated in both modes, therefore in mode 1 with an output voltage of 20 volts and in mode 2 with an output voltage of 60 volts, which is more than four times this input voltage. An interesting thing is uh, we just need a very simple control to achieve this zero voltage switching. A simple voltage mode controller is used and the clamp switch signal is derived directly from the main transistor drive signals using some logic circuit without any current sensing. Therefore, it's possible to have a low complexity zero voltage switching without the need for a current sensor. A basic scheme for control is shown here on the right. Now to some measurement results here. It's shown uh, the waveforms for the converter operating in mode one, where the duty cycle is less than 50%. We can see here on the left side, the waveforms for converter operating with clamp switch activated and on the right side with clamp switch deactivated. As can be seen, we get the smooth waveforms on the left side when the clamp switch is activated without this parasitic oscillation and therefore uh, EMI is improved and we can achieve at least here a uh, partial CVS. And the same can also be seen if we consider mode two here and here on the left side with clamp switch activated on the right side without clamp switch activated. And we can see here, these are more or less the same waveform as in a standard boost DC-DC converter operating with a clamp switch. Another experimental result of the converter operated with clamp switch is shown on this slide. We get a smoother efficiency curve. This is shown here. If you look at the blue curve, which, which is the converter operated in mode two with the clamp switch activated compared to a converter without the clamp switch activated, which is the red efficiency curve, we can see uh, the peak efficiencies are almost the same for both cases, but the blue curve is much smoother than the red curve where we have large variations in efficiencies. These are due to the fact that in a converter without a clamp switch, we will turn on the transistor at varying drain to source voltages, sometimes at a higher drain to source voltage and sometimes at a lower drain to source voltage where we have a zero voltage switching and therefore we get variation in the switching losses. In conclusion, we can see that a simple CVS operation is also possible for a multi-level flying capacitor converter when using a clamp switch. This allows for a very low complexity implementation of the CVS without any current sensors as we can derive the required driving signals for the clamp switch from the main drive signals. But we have to do this in the different discontinuous conduction modes in different ways. At least partial CVS can be achieved and we can reduce parasitic oscillations in all modes and we can prevent efficiency variations which would otherwise occur in a discontinuous conduction mode operated converter.
If you have any further questions, there will be a question and answer session at quarter past three, or you can send me an email to the address shown here.